like I said, one thing that we always worry about with our node positive patients is that they are at high risk, not just at early recurrence, but potentially at late recurrence. And uh, here we have patients that I think we look at and go, gosh, you're high risk. Yet, when you look at them at a genomic level and look at this expression level of these two genes, a quarter of those patients are essentially low risk and very unlikely to benefit from extending of endocrine therapy, similar to the patient we just discussed. And what does this play out, play out like in one of those studies? So this is a, a little graphic from the IDEAL trial. So just to walk you through this, in the IDEAL trial, patients were randomized after five years of endocrine therapy to extend for two and a half years versus 10 years of extension, a full 10 years, five years of extension. This is a high risk patient cohort entering the study. There was no randomization to no years of extension. Many of these patients needed chemotherapy. Uh, the investigators at the time felt that it was not appropriate to randomize to no years. So it's two and a half versus five years of extension. And what you're looking at here is kind of a yucky flavor of tumor, node positive, large tumors, T2 or greater. Yet, when you look at the subgroup of patients from that trial that had low scores on the BCI biomarker, the HRI biomarker, there is no difference between the partly extending and the full extending arms, underscoring what this data looks like in one of the trials when you have that result.